Today, I'm gonna take DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna make this thumbnail and it's gonna be awesome. Hi, I'm Jared Hoyman with VisibleTour.com and welcome to this tutorial on how to make thumbnails for YouTube. It's easy, it's quick, and I've been using DaVinci Resolve for the last four months doing mine and I have found it very effective in time. But before we get into that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like because you know you're gonna like the video already. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how it's done, but first we have to come up with an image. So we'll do something like this. Um, there's DaVinci Resolve here and um, a thumbnail here. So let's just do this and I'll smile and that will probably be it. So we're gonna go right into DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna show you how to edit that. All right, here's the clip that we are gonna copy. So Control C, then if you hold down Alt and you scroll down with your mouse you can get everything a little bit smaller here and then we will just put it over here for now hold down alt scroll up and that way you can zoom in more into your timeline and that's the fastest way to go there um, we don't need the audio on this so I'm going to unlink it delete um, maybe move it up a layer or so Bring this down so we have a little bit more to work with. So right now, here's me pointing straight up and this is what we're gonna do. Um, first things first, we are gonna go into color tab. I like to have options. So this is what I do. You hit better, make sure you're on this little portraiture icon here, hit better, hit the plus, so make sure you're on this. And then what you're gonna do, this is the magic selection. We're going to kind of just stay in the form of me. And so I kind of just do the outline a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just don't go outside of the object that you're trying to uh, cut out. So we'll stay there and just be safe. Do a little squiggly on my face. Um, and so you're gonna see what this is gonna do. It's gonna select this, but you can't tell right now that it actually selected me. So right here where your node is, in the empty space, you're gonna right click and you're gonna go add alpha output. And that's what this blue is. So you're gonna connect the blue with the blue. And this could take a little bit of time depending on your machine. Um, if it was on faster, this would have happened almost instantly. Um, I like to do better, so it's actually using a more specific algorithm to make sure it is grabbing that object. Now you can do this anywhere. So now the background is actually black. It cut out the background, kept the object, and it did a pretty good job putting me as the object and nothing else. Um, you can do this with out a plain background like I had. You can do this in any room. The problem is if there's not enough contrast or difference, um, it may not know it. And then that's why you would go to this minus and start tweaking things that you want out of it. So it is nice if you're separated from the background. So now think of this as a PNG layer. You have this right here. If you go over to edit now, um, we can go over to the transform end I can zoom out a little bit. I can make myself a little bit, whoa. Looks like I'm flipping the bird anyways. We can make me however big we wanna make me um, and position, but we should have a good background. So although I dumped Adobe when it comes to Premiere, I still use Lightroom. And because I use Lightroom, well, I get to use their stock footage and they have a free template. A lot of people don't realize that there is a free Adobe stock footage out there that you don't have to pay that 20 or 70 or 30. I don't even know how much it is because I don't buy them, um, but you don't have to buy them. You can go to the free version and you just type in what you're looking for or a theme. Um, I put in background. I was just curious what would come up. So these are all the different backgrounds. There are several pages. Um, that you can choose from, download it. So I'm actually gonna drag it right here and we'll grab it out of the library. And there it is. And so here we are. Now we want this background to fill up the whole space. 
And what am I pointing to? We gotta figure that out. So right now it just looks like I'm almost flipping the bird to, to somebody. We don't know who, but to somebody. Okay, so here we are. We've got um, the DaVinci Resolve logo right there. We'll put it on top. And it's quite big, so we really don't need it to be that big of a clip. So we'll delete that. Then we'll go over to Transform. We'll hit Zoom. Um, let's bring it right over to my finger there. Yes, I think that's it. I'm not gonna use any text because you could use text right here. I have to have a thumbnail within a thumbnail. How am I gonna do this? This is gonna be, I made this complicated in my head and I don't even know if it should be because I just told you that this is really easy. Thumbnail, do that. And so this is gonna simulate what's gonna be in it. So just follow me, this is like Inception right now. If any of you follow Daryl Ives, um, he is a YouTuber, but he's also a consultant for YouTube. Um, he has a really good book out there called The YouTube Formula. Highly recommend it. Talks about how you should spend more time on your thumbnail than you should on your video. We are gonna right click. So this is where that inception thing comes in. So right here, I just right clicked on it. Okay, for the purpose of making this a true YouTube thumbnail, I'm doing a thumbnail within a thumbnail. So it's going to be not super consistent. So this isn't inception. I am so sorry, but I'm going to get rid of um, this little thumbnail icon that I created. Um, and then I took a JPEG copy of that. I'm going to bring that in here and I'm going to shrink it down. We'll see how that looks. See, it's like a thumbnail within a thumbnail, but then I'm going to put it right up here and this is not going to work. Okay. So obviously this doesn't look good because it doesn't, there's not enough contrast. It looks like it's part of the wood almost. So we need some contrast. The best thing to do is to put a border around it. That is the thumbnail right there. Could I have used a different background? Yes, I could spend hours looking at backgrounds on Adobe's free stock site and pick something. But you know what? You would never see any of my videos if that was the case. Now we are going to right click. We're going to grab still. Then we're going to right click right on here and hit export. Be sure to hit JPEG and label it the way you want to label it. I'm going to label it thumb. I'm going to bring it over here. This is it right here. It is 5.15 megabytes. If you're on YouTube, they want less than two megabytes. You cannot exceed two megabytes for your thumbnail. So this is way too big. If you have GIMP or if you have Photoshop, you can use that. GIMP is free. It's an open source. So we're going to open up GIMP right now and I'm going to show you how easy and fast this is. Here is the thumbnail dragged into GIMP. And what you'll want to do is now go to file, go to export as, um, rename it. Again, it's going to be thumb. You're going to hit export and this is where the trick comes in. You're going to want to do show preview in image window. And right now it says 7.3 megabytes. Let's decrease it. It's down to 2.3. That's still too big. Down to 80% is 1.5. Perfect. Let's export it. And now if you look right here, it's 1.43 megabytes and you're able then to upload it onto YouTube and you've got something that went pretty quick. Okay, I decided to go back after I finished showing you how I did all of this because this background was not that good in the contrast. So I used it for the mini thumbnail and then I just uh, used this more gray to give a better contrast. So could there have been other backgrounds to use? Yeah, probably. All right, I just wanna show you this real quick as well. If you go to toolbox, you type in border, you get this border here. You just drag it right onto the clip. I already did that and that's what this is. Um, you go over to effects and here it is. Off, on, off, on. I have not done a border before on my thumbnails, but hey, maybe that's something that helps make the thumbnail stand out. You let me know in the comments below if this border does help stand out. Um, I kind of like it. I did a little border on here, obviously, on the mini thumbnail within the thumbnail 
it's such an inception moment here, but not really because this isn't consistent, but it makes decent contrast. So let me know what you think of this, especially this right here, this beautiful mug. My wife thinks so at least. If you found this helpful, please like this video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe because there's gonna be more tutorials on DaVinci Resolve and quick little tips like this, especially if you wanna create content on YouTube and have somebody wanna click on it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out these other videos that YouTube's telling you to watch. You're probably gonna like them. It's just a hunch I have.